Welcome to the solo playthrough of Sleeping Gods Distant Skies by Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games. Now this is the follow up to the original Sleeping Gods, my number one game of all time. So let's go have some fun and let's play a round of Sleeping Gods Distant Skies. So this is what we have in front of us here. This is the map, this is all the terrain that we're gonna be traveling, and it's a book. So you just turn to multiple pages and look, multiple spoilers. These are gonna be our enemies over here. And look, there's some baddies there. Look, Bojack Horseman, look, Jerk of a Horse. We're gonna to have to probably take him on at some stage there. We've got our adventure combat cards. This is our flight when we need to fly around the map. Look, we now have a pilot, so that's new in Sleeping Gods Distant Skies. This is gonna be our main board that we're gonna be working off here. It's gonna have our timer, plus also our event cards and our ability cards there. And these are our main people, and I'm playing all five of these people. Claire Smith, she's the big dog. She's the leader here of this little misfit crew. We've got Miguel, Jesse, Azarius. Azarius, a bit of a jerk sometimes, Ed, Look, oh, let's get into this great game. Now, for background, what's the background here? Look, we went and hired old mate pilot and he flew us into this different universe. And that's pretty much it. Don't trust that pilot. Anyway, that's the introduction there. That's as quick as, also there's other plane crashes, other people. And there's also like some god called Mikra who we're trying to like get totems for. Anyway, that's all you need to know. So let's get cracker lacking straight into a campaign. So we always start off here with Claire Smith. She represents the whole group of people. Now, we start off there, and look, first thing we're gonna do every round is we're gonna grab the two ability cards. So we've got two here, we start off with four, we now have six ability cards. So, oh, let's see. Now, what we wanna do with these is these actually help our members. They're gonna grow their skills. So there's a whole bunch of skills there, and we're gonna go through them over the course of the campaign, but they're gonna give them a bit of a boost. Now, I always find, I always seem to go with Old Mate Azarius. I like to give him a bit of extra savvy skill. And the savvy skill is this blue one here. So to do that, all I gotta do is shove that in there. I've just gotta get rid of one of these, and let's see, what do I wanna get rid of? For now, I don't really care about crafting, so I'll get rid of that. So. Basically, it's gonna say there, get rid of one card, and that's what I did. Now, he is now, when we do a savvy skill check, he's got two uh, savvy skills there, and one savvy skill there, plus also he's got this other advantage here. Once per turn, we can spend a rope, and these are our resources up here. We start off with one rope to heal three health. So look, maybe that's gonna come in handy. Anyway, that's all we're gonna do now. Next step we do is we're gonna have a look at the event card, the first event card, and straight away, it's a level two spider bite. Look, spiders, they're the jerks of the insect world. A small red spider bites Jessie when she walks into its web. Well, Jessie, look, you're a numbat for walking into that web, but anyway, we now have an issue here. And look, straight away, this is where my savvy skill is gonna come in handy. Straight away, we're gonna need a seven savvy skill check. Now, to do that, we count up, well, firstly, we need to nominate people, or you don't even have to nominate anyone, but I'm gonna nominate Azarius, because Azarius, it's about time you earned your money, and we're gonna spend one stamina there. Now, he's gonna go in with two, three uh, savvy skill. And now all we're gonna do is check the fate score on the next ability card. So let's flip it over. And the fate score is five, so we're five plus three. We have eight, we needed seven, we've achieved it. Well done, Azarius, you finally earned the bickies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna gain one sand honey here. So let's grab that, put that over there. If we failed, we would have lost three health and we also would have gra uh, grabbed some venom. And you know, the spider must obviously bit us. And Jesse, well, Jesse, Sometimes that is how the cookie crumbles. But look, this time you didn't get spider bite. So that event's now finished. Now we can start spending our time. Now, what we've got here, we've got options here. We can uh, travel, which is gonna cost us one. Every time we travel, we can explore. So when there's a number on the, on the map there, we can explore that section. We can fly our plane, we can repair our plane, or we can camp. So camping, look, we've got a nice, beautiful little map here. And what's gonna happen is, oh, let's flip it over here. These camps are gonna tell us the length of our campaign. Once we run out of camps, it is the end of the game. We've either finished the game or not or whatever, but we're not gonna to get to that tonight, so that won't matter. So look, basically we're gonna be exploring this map for us tonight. Now, let's go straight away. Look, we know, I've done this multiple times now. I know what's the six, one, and five. I know there's some good stuff there. Why don't we try something a little bit different? I don't think I've ever gone down to nine, eight, and 12. So maybe let's do that straight away. So let's go, we're gonna go one, two, three. So first it's going to cost me three times. So one, two, three. Now, 
because I've gone on a treacherous terrain. So this little mountain symbol tells me it's a treacherous terrain. Unfortunately, to do that, I now have to lose three health. So who's gonna lose some health? Well, Ed, uh, look, Ed, I never really liked you anyway. So one, two, three, you are gone there. So let's now move these are out of the road because obviously I'm an absolute mess tonight, but we'll need them later. Now, we're at number nine. So I now want to explore number nine. So it's gonna cost me two time to explore, one, two, and now let's get into the book of goodness. This is where all the fun is in this book. And obviously, as I mentioned, multiple spoilers. And you know what, I don't care. If you're watching this video, enjoy it. Here we go, number nine. If we have the keyword library. Now we've got nothing here with keywords yet, but as of course the game, we're gonna collect some cards there. They're gonna give us keywords. Anyway, we don't have keyword library now. So a horse headed traveler approaches. What's with the horses here? Like seriously, this world loves a good far lap horse. Now, approaches you bowing sli slowly with his arms spread to show he's no strength. How, how's the horse got arms? Anyway, like, like, whatevs, whatevs, let's, let's, let's ignore that. Greatness awaits you, strangers. My name is Imrimirian, Imrimirian, Harkian scholar and philosopher. A philosopher horse. Now look, things are getting juicy here on the Bangers Project. You've practically used up all your words for the day already. Do you not follow the speaking laws of the Harkarians? Ask Azeris. I told you Azeris just won't keep his big mouth shut. Now, what else is he gonna say here? Do you know much of our ways, Lucran? Imerian what whinnies? Well, that's what horses do, they whinny. They say a Harkian utters words like a miser spends silver, says Azeris. Azeris, look, I just, I, I'm, I'm done with you already, buddy. Done with you already. Look, Claire, you're the, you're the big dog here. You tell Azeris to keep his mouth shut because this horse, it's gonna get cranky, you can just tell, it's gonna get cranky. The horse, head, horse headed man sights. See, told you, already cranky at us. Not many Harkians can obey the word law. 20 words each day is unbearable. 20 words each day, now that would be tough. It's outdated and inconvenient. Well, it is inconvenient. The people say it's a command from our creator, Orfash, but that's a lie. Well, look, I already know Orfash. Orfash is a god and he's a bit of a jerk anyway. Why then do not our cousins, the Mythans, also have a daily speech limit? Well, it's a bloody good question. Azarian shrugs, I can't imagine Orfash caring about such things. Besides, the gods have lost their power. You need not fear them. Again, Azarius being just a douche canoe. I do not, but my village does. That's a Harkarian named Ekerin who has declared himself a speaker for the gods. He says he's been called to return everyone to the true path, which is, according to him, obeying the speech laws. Sounds like he doesn't obey the speech limit himself, says Miguel. Well done, Miguel, thank you for butting in. Now, Imerurin grunts. He says that the law doesn't apply to him. He's wanted to rule these lands for years, but everyone would stop following him if they knew the truth. There's a library of ancient Harkian tombs that tell the truth about history. Help me find them. I've heard of you people, and I know you're looking for totems. How did you know that, cheeky little devil? I have one, and you can have it if you help me find a library. Well, we need totems, so yes. But first, we need an ancient tablet from my village. Look, there's always a catch in there. It's hidden somewhere in Ekerin's house, but he won't let anyone see it. We should start there. Well, look, that's a bloody good idea. So we're gonna gain quest 32, gain adventure card 37, and return to the map. So let's get these out here. So we need uh, quest number 32. Where is that? And there we go. We've got that and we need adventure card 37. Okay, look, here's the horsey. There's Imarurin. Well, I never knew you were a blue horse. I never saw that coming. So that is now a Harkian ally. We now have an ally. So look, I'm happy with that. So he's gonna go in this card here. These are our adventure cards. Now, these cards are gonna come in handy. We can use them, but once we spend them, they go into our adventure discard, but we can get them back once we camp. Anyway, we now have this, which is gonna give us either two, uh, basically, when we're when we're attacking, we're going to get counterattack. This is going to help give us, like, help help them stopping us to uh, attacking us. Look, I'm assuming there's a word here. There's a word. There's a word I want. Blocking. Blocking is the word I want. Two blocking. That seemed a lot simpler than it needed to be. Or we could also have two savvy. So if we never ever need like a big savvy one, we could have like a Zerus with his three savvy. Plus we could have Imirumurin with their savvy. Look, could come in handy. Anyway, go on over there. There are our adventure cards for later on when we need them. Now, let's look at this quest here. We have keyword library, so our first keyword. We agreed to help a Harkian named Imarurin find a hidden library. 
Another Harkian named Ekerin has declared himself speaker for the gods so he can control their village, and finding the library would undermine his declarations. Imeraren told us that to find the library, we first need a stone tablet from Ekerin's house. It's in the village of Thistletown in the southeast. So let's now have a think about the map. Where are we? Look, we're in the south because I know I can't go any more further maps south. We're basically here. Let's have a look at this. We're page oh, two and three. So we're right here. It's going to be in the southeast. So it's going to be somewhere over here. Well, there's Thistletown right there on the map. So that's where I'm heading. That is my first quest. And look, things are getting juicy right now. Let's have a drink. Okay, now I've had a good drink. I am ready to crack on. So that was a pretty exciting start. Now, we're gonna now start heading across, but here's the question. We've now run out of time. So our turn is over. If we were playing with other people, we would now swap it over and they would take over. They would also be controlling a couple of these characters and I'd be controlling a couple, but again, as solo, I've just got the whole lot in front of me. So all that happens is we restart this. I grab two more ability cards and let's see what we got. Inventive and Snare, they're a couple of crafting ones. They're pretty useless. Um, let's just keep these for now and we'll think about using them very, very soon. Um, maybe we should chuck one on now. Let's see. Maybe let's chuck a good old fashioned cunning. Um, let's use this cunning here with Ed, Ed from Honolulu. And that's gonna cost us two cards. So what should we get rid of? Let's get rid of both of these. I don't like them. Okay. So now when we need to do a cunning skill check, we now have three cunning on Ed. So that's good to know. Now we've done our abilities. Let's have a look at the next event. Raiding rats. Rats sneak into the plane, chewing the wiring and stealing food. Well, that's that's a kick in the old nuts right there, the old rats, eh? So what we're gonna do is now, we now are gonna have to lose a meat. They ate a meat, pesky little rat. It also caused the plane some damage. So a plane, just sitting there, just did nothing wrong, all of a sudden got raided by rats, and now the damage has gone down. What I might do is I might try and explain this. So up the top here is your health of your plane, down the bottom is the amount of fuel you have. So there we go, so it took one damage there. So that event card's now done. We can now use our time again. So. Oh, we want to go across, but surely there's not good stuff all the way across. Surely, surely, surely. I'm, look, I'm going to skip eight. Let's go one, two. So let's spend two time and let's explore number 12. Hopefully I didn't do that wrong and hopefully this is all good for me. Number 12. So to explore, of course, going to cost me one, two. Now, if keyword valuable, well, we've only got one keyword and it's library, so not helpful. Okay, slugs slugs climb over dilapidated cabin. What's with all the insects, spiders and slugs and rats? Just, just dismal. Anyway, it's roof rimmed with lichen. Inside the place is filled with vivid paintings, landscapes, the color of dried blood, peopled by ethereal figures treading uncertain paths. Painting supplies litter the floor, cobwebs hang from jars of paintbrushes. This is the work of a genius, says Miguel. Who painted these? They'll get destroyed out here in this old cabin. They're available, all right, says Ed, but we can't carry all these paintings around with us. You find a letter and read it aloud. Raskin, if you want your old job back, return at once. There's high demand from Stormlock City for weapons and armor, and we're receiving regular shipments of ore from Farklom again. Lakifa Ironworks. We now gain quest 134, and we return to the map, so. 134, let's find out what quest 134 is. Oh, let's have a look, something to do about ironworks. Well, actually that's pretty good, 134, straight there. Keyword imagery. We found a cabin filled with fascinating paintings. Miguel insists we must find a way to preserve them. They'll likely be destroyed in that old cabin. The letter indicated that the artist Raskin blah, 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 returned to, blah, 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 to the West. Okay, so that's basically telling us that we, he's returned to the ironworks to the West, but I'm going East, so don't really care right now. Quest, you can just sit there just collecting dust. Maybe I'll put my quest up here for now. So you can see I've got two quests going on. Okay, now 
it's time to turn the page. So as you can see here, this means we turn to page four and we just basically come across to where we would come on the other side. So I'll flip that over there and I come across here. So that cost me one time, but because I landed on a treacherous terrain. So when we see these symbols, there's water treacherous terrain, there's mountains, there's cold. Well, right now we landed on a mountain treacherous terrain. So it means I must lose three health and that's represented up here. So who's gonna lose some health? Well. Azarius, like I said, already have issues with you, so there you go, mate, you're done. Now, what do we do now? We've run out of time, it's obviously time to start our next round. Two ability cards, let's see what we got. Guts and Lionheart, well, Guts, I love that, Guts. Oof, I can add plus one health to myself every time a player explores. Look, pretty good, let's get some Guts into us. Good old, that's a good Aussie word, Guts. But look, Azarius, he's got the most guts. He's also the biggest jerk, but it makes the most sense to chuck guts on him as well. So let's chuck guts in there. It's gonna cost us two. And let's see, what do I wanna get rid of? I'll get rid of that one, and I'll get rid of that one. Okay. So Azarius now has three, well, I mean, let's just, let's just call them muscles. Like, it's just old muscles over there, but you know, it's got obviously got a better name than that. And what is it? Strength. That again makes sense. And savvy. So he's now got three savvy, three strength. Look, Azarius, look, maybe he might come in useful after all. So that's the end of that turn. Let's go into our event now. Hunting Health Arc. The Health Arc sees your plane. That's these little pterodactyl things. They're just like, I don't know. I just feel something like just like leave me alone. Like I'm just I'm just a little little person visiting your country. Anyway, health arc siege plane, you must take off before it attacks. Now, here's a problem. I'm over here, Claire and her friends, well, I don't know, let's say her acquaintances, because right now she's getting a bit annoyed with Zarius, but Claire and her acquaintances are now over here, far, far, far away from the plane, and the plane's all the way back here. Let's flip back over the page. And the plane is right here. That's where it is currently at the moment, in Henrik's camp up there. So the plane's there, I'm over here. What is the issue? Well, the issue obviously is who's flying the plane. And lucky for me, we have old mate pilot. Where is he? There he is. Eugene Coleman, the guy who flew us into this little universe, you know, obviously doesn't actually have a pilot's license, but he can move the plane for us. We just gotta go, hey, Eugene, come fly the plane. Anyway, pay one fuel to move the plane. We can do that. Okay, let's spend Eugene, because really we, we wanna move the plane. We, we, we don't want health arc there. And let's move the plane. Let's well, let's move it to where we are now. So where are we? We're in well, we're in the Harkian Forest. So okay, so let's fly the plane there. One, and well, firstly to fly we need to use two two time. We're going to lose one fuel, and now we've got to work out what sort of damage. So if you look here, it's got flight, fate plus distance. Now we flew one distance, so one from there to there is one distance plus we draw this and our fate is seven. So it's gonna be seven plus one is eight. Eight plus damage, we take two. One, two, there we go, two damage to the plane and the plane is not in the best nick at all. But anyway, we've now completed this event. We've moved the plane, we're gonna gain a whiskey for our troubles. It's kind of nice, so there we go. So achieved that one there. Now, let's have a think about this. Hmm. What do we want to do? There's a whole bunch to explore. There's obviously like a, a river or lake up here. There's a whole bunch of uh, water treacherous terrain, but we wanted to go across this village because we're doing that quest to find Imeringen's enemy. Um, anyway, we need to find something. So we're going that way. And I think we're gonna head for this village. So let's let's do my old thing where, let's skip two, one, two, spend two time, one, two. And well, we have enough time to explore, but what we have is, this is a good little catch here where we can do we can add in a time. Because we didn't achieve that time, we get that hour back next round. So I'm gonna put that up there, get an extra extra hour next round. Okay, let's go to ability cards. Can you see how simple this is? Ability cards, event, use your time, pretty simple. And we have some more savvy here. We've got first aid and we've got bandages, both pretty useless to us, but we'll just hold on to them for now. And what's the next event? Is it gonna be rubbish? Is it gonna be good? Wolverines, it's always rubbish. Vicious wolverines steal your food. Just everything out of you. It's pretty much like a stray. Everything's out of you trying to kill you. Miguel's gonna take two damage. Miguel, sorry buddy, you're down there. And we're gonna lose a meat. Now, 
here's the thing, if you never have a resource, you don't have to spend it, so I don't lose my meat. So Wolverines, you're gonna go hungry tonight. There we go. Now, we're back here on 48. I randomly just wanna explore something, so let's explore 48. Gonna cost us two to explore, and let's read what is 48. We haven't actually had any enemies yet, so maybe a fight's on the cards, perhaps. Or perhaps not, I have no idea. Have never gone this way before, so I don't know. 48. Oh. You wander the forest at night. Something moves in the trees. Obstacle darkness. Lose one torch or take five damage and gain frightened. Well, we do have a torch, so let's spend that. We obviously don't want to lose that. Um, but unfortunately, it's going to have to do because I am scared of the dark. Branches crash as huge bears rip through the woods. Freaking hell, everything out here. Bears, wolverines, rats, and spiders, and oh, okay. If keyword glutton, which we don't have, we could feed the bears, but we don't have it, so otherwise continue. Combat, 24, 25. These are level nine combats. Now, we are, we are, we are getting to the juicy stuff. 24, 25, let's have a look. Actually, that's pretty good, 24, 25. Okay, now we get to see how combat works. Let's flip these over here, and we have an ancient mother bear and a rock tooth bear. Look, aren't they just the cutest? Now, this is, look, combat, look, let's just do combat, and you're gonna figure out how it goes. So we basically have to take on these. You may run from this combat at the, at the end of an enemy phase. If you do, return to the map. If you do defeat the enemies, gain one meat, one sand honey, one tundra berry, one fire quartz, and two gurgon leaves. Cross off the location 48 off the map. Look, this is too good not to fight these bad little bears. In Australia, we've got to fight koalas. These are, you know, they're the rock bears. These are the mother bears and the rock tooth bear. Now, let's go here. What are we going to do? Now, to do combat, we have an adventure combat deck here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five cards. Put them down here. And then I now have to assign four of these cards to my team and those four people are going to go in and fight so we've got a pistol there we've got a double punch we've got hidden strike we've got a machete and we have a wrench so that one looks good that one looks good um that's good for strength and sure sure why not let's do that one okay so we won't use this one for, for us now so the unused combat cards go there Okay, now let's assign them to everyone. So, double punch. Double punch is gonna cause us, we need spacey, we need strength to get some advantage out of that one. So let's give that to Azarius. Um, hidden strike can go to Jesse. Pistol can go to Miguel. And wrench can go to Ed. Now, I get to choose now who's gonna fight first. And I think, let's send Azarius in first. Take one for the team, buddy. And what he is, he's gonna have zero attack, plus the number of strength he has. He has three strength, plus a roll of the dice. And here's our dice here, nice big numbers. Okay, so we start off with three. What have we got extra? And minus one, so we have two. And Azarius, you suck. You, you suck. Okay, so Azarius is gonna do two. Now, mm -mm 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 -mm. do you know what I did? what I did wrong? I really stuffed the pooch on this one, screwed the pooch. I realize this has the only one that has a synergy token and synergy tokens happen if we cover up certain ones on here and we basically gain abilities. And I should have done that, I shouldn't have done that first, that was a stupid move. Um, but anyway, I've done it now, so I'm gonna have to suck it up, two damage. Now, let's have a think what we're gonna do here. So, these ones here that are hearts, they cost the amount of uh, damage. So, two damage, I could take out this one here, this two heart here. But these other ones here, everything else that's not a heart is just a single number, so, if I, oh, actually firstly, first thing I do, I'm gonna give these guys some power. So these are, these blue triangles, they're gonna be power. So two, three, four power for this one. And this one's gonna have three power. So to do that first. And when they attack me back, this is gonna be six damage plus the amount of power it has. This one's gonna be three damage plus the amount. So maybe I'm better off trying to identify this one, but the problem is, like two is pretty but useless. Um, okay, I think for now, because it's a bit useless, let's just let's just cover these two up here in the middle. Okay. 
it was a look a very wasted turn and now what's going to happen is Azerus is going to get attacked back and he's going to get attacked back with six plus three he's going to get attacked back with nine now um actually first things first he should have got plus one self every time a player explored so what i'll do i'll give him plus one because we did explore um now yeah, I think there's nothing I can do. So he's just going to take nine damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I bet that annoyed a lot of people that I didn't, just didn't go down nine. Anyway, now, who is next on the block here? We've got Jesse, Miguel, and Ed still left to attack. And I think I need to go Miguel. I think I'm going to need some big numbers here. So this is four damage plus the roll of the dice. Hopefully the better roll, just zero. These, these rolls are horrendous. Okay, so four damage. Oh, it's not looking good, is it? It's not looking good at all. Um, okay, I think then I'm going to, for four, I'm gonna cover up one of these threes and I'll cover up this one right here. Let's go with, Oh, well, we haven't got much left. We've got Jesse here with two and one. So that's going to be, oh God, that's a bit rubbish. So three attack, which means I can take out one more here. And we have now one defense, plus also we can use the synergy token to take off one of these. And Mother Bear is going to attack back and it's going to attack back with nine. And basically Jesse's going to be at zero. And look, everyone's going to be at zero and look, Let's just pretend none of that happened because look, we want this to be a bit of fun. So let's move on from Mother Bear. Look, Mother Bear beat us and look, realistically, we lost that game. But you know what? Don't care. Let's crack on, pretend that didn't even happen. We can do that, can't we? Sure, sure that's in the rules. Okay. Now, we've now learnt what attacking is all about. So let's go back over and try and finish this quest before we finish this video. So we wanna travel, oh look, there's three numbers right around here. Which one is the one we need to go to? I have no idea. Let's just go one, two, one, two, and let's explore. And that's gonna cost us our one, two, and that's now spent. Okay, let's explore 34. No more attacks, please. That absolutely nailed us, those damn bears. Thirty-four horse-headed villagers. Well, we know we're in the right spot now. We want the old horses. Drift through town in eerie silence. Some chopping wood, others carrying bundles. Most casting distrustful gazes your way. Welcome to Thistle Town, strangers. A Harkian with a silky black coat approaches. His long mane swirls around his scarlet robe like smoke on a glowing ember. He points with a staff capped by a piece of polished obsidian. I am Ekerin, humble god and teacher of the Harkins. Now, Ekerin, he is the jerk we are after and we want to steal from him, but obviously we don't want to tell him that. Before you go further, you should know that these Harkins hold to the old laws. Look, I know all about you, Ekerin. Old mate Imarun told me all about you. Where is Imarun? Somewhere in here. There we go. Old Bluey. She told us all about you. Okay, so let's now read here. Jessie folds her arms, which are, Harkins are forbidden from speaking more than 20 words each day. It is a command from their great creator, Orfash, given many eons ago. Miguel chuckles. You're already past that limit and still going. Oh, Miguel, you sassy beast. As a teacher, the gods need me to spread their word. Thus, they have lifted the holy word limits from me. Hmm, convenient, said Ed, examining a nearby market stall filled with mushrooms. Indeed, Ekron returns with a smug grin. He, yeah, it would be a smug grin. He's quite a smug character. Since I imagine you're here on business, I'll let you wander. Just watch out for a scoundrel named Imran. He's a liar and a con artist. Ekron nods and makes a swift turn, marching towards a crown of Harkins by the town well. Now, here we go. So it's basically he says, she says, he says, he says. Now, should we A, spy on Ekron the jerk, which requires keyword library, which we have keyword library. So we could do that, or we could investigate the nearby market store, or we could leave. Well, we're definitely not leaving. We've gone this far. Let's use keyword library. And now we're going to need cunning 10. How the hell are we going to achieve that? That's going to be our biggest issue. So Ed has three cunning. 
let's see, can I spend any of these for, I can spend this one for cunning. Let's do that for now. So let's spend this one for cunning. That now gives us four cunning. Okay, well let's, let's, let's do it. So Ed, we're gonna spend a stamina. We're gonna use the great cunning that you have and we need cunning 10. So we got four, we need six from this fate draw. <laughs> we got six exactly, that is magical. I absolutely love this game and we are at 10 cunning. So we now turn to 34.3. 34.3, Ekron stands at the well, greeting over Harkins. No one else says a word. Somber quiet reigns among the crowd as Ekron begins to preach. You watch the sermon from the corner of a log house until Ekron closes the sermon and strides to the east side of town. There he meets with some Harkins behind a house. Have you found Imaron? The Harkins shake his head. No, but we caught his brother. Hmm. Ekron nods, pleased at the news. Put him in the stocks. I must leave now, but I want you to start his punishment right away. Oh, don't whip me, don't whip me. Now, should we A, follow Ekron to his house, or should we B, follow the other Harkin and try to free Imaron's brother? We're gonna need a perception of 10. Are we good with perception? No, we're not, so that's, that's, that's not gonna happen. So let's follow Ekron to his house, 34.7. Ekron enters his house, leaving the door half open. How convenient. Is it a trap? Now, should we sneak in and steal the tablet? We're gonna need a perception of 11, which we don't have, or should we break in and attack Ekron? Well, we all know where this is going. Let's get ready to attack Ekron. 34.4, Ekron snorts. You're in league with Imran, aren't you? He calls out, warriors, arrest these criminals. So we can A, attack Emran, or B, flee into the woods. Well, we're sort of up against it now. Do we combat one, two, three, four, and 44, which sounds bloody awful, or should we just try perception nine and just, just pray? Because if we fail, it's minus seven health and it's basically game over for us. So let's go with perception nine. Have we got anything we can use here? This one here lets us use two perceptions. So let's use that. That's gonna give us two perception. Let's use Azirius, come good for me. No, oh, actually no, let's use Big Dog. Let's use Claire. Okay, Claire, you're gonna use that. It's gonna give us three perception. We need seven. No, hang on, we need six. We need six more. Okay, here we go. This is for all the cookies. This is it, the end of the video, and it's bloody five. It's freaking bloody five. That gives us eight. That, that's, that's, that's rubbish. That's, that's sleeping gods distance guys i hope you enjoyed this run through this solo run through look unfortunately we'll never know was ekron the baddie was imran the baddie we'll never know look this is the beauty of sleeping god so look hopefully you enjoyed that i'm hoax this is the bangers project and this is sleeping gods distance guys